Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can... I guess so bored saying this. Only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Um, there must be another way of rewording that introduction. Don't listen to this if you're an idiot. I suppose would be another one. Anyone that would listen to a sleep session whilst driving a car. I mean, come on. That's got to be... That's pretty dumb, isn't it? Let's face it. Oh, but I just like to relax when I'm driving. I get so stressed. I like to relax. No. Just... Come on, really? Oh. Anyway. It's a good start, isn't it? Warm my audience up to me by calling them idiots. I don't think anybody would listen to this and drive at the same time. Please don't do that. And if you if you if you are driving while listening to this, turn the recording off and get yourself checked out by the doctor because there's something wrong with you. It's you know, it's it's very dangerous. Don't do stuff like that. You know, if you oh, can you imagine if you're in a plane and the pilot's listening to me droning on. You wouldn't really... I wouldn't expect to land safely. You know, imagine the pilot's just dribbling in a sleep. Out of complete boredom. Although, apparently... Um, <laughs> I think they, on tube trains... I think this is, is it, I think it's a tube chain trains in London. I don't know if they've still got them, but they used to have a thing for the drivers called the idiot stick. I think they called it again. I might be making this up. It might not have been called that, but that's what I'd call it. It's the idiot stick. So they had to hold on to this stick. And if they let go of it, the train would you know, slowly come to a stop even if they're in the middle of a tunnel because that meant that the driver had fallen asleep <laughs> you imagine you, you're on a tube and you've got thousands of people all crammed in and you just you fell asleep like, wow anyway this is a bit of a different start to my recordings. Just give you an update. I made quite a nice little recording today. I think it lasted for about half an hour, I think. And it was a relaxation. I've kind of copied myself. Uh, so, you know, for those that accuse me of copying others doing boring sessions I actually copied myself and as you may know I do deep sleep whisper hypnosis recordings I've got a podcast for that and that's very popular it's growing in popularity um, it's probably the most popular podcast I've got this one's kind of seemed to be taken over actually but it's still up there so I've recorded I've got a new podcast called Deep, relax, whisper hypnosis. See what I did there? Just changed one word. So instead of sleep, it's relax. And I've got the new podcast that I've started on Spreaker. I built an image for the podcast, so that took me a while. So I got that all nice. Well, I'm fairly pleased with it. And I got one episode, but it's number one. But I uploaded it onto my Facebook page, so so just check it out. It's the first one is like 
counting down, but it's relaxation. So it's basically kind of the same as the deep sleep, but it's it's not about sleeping. It's just about relaxing. And at the end of it, I say you can open your eyes if you want, or just keep your eyes closed, do what you want. With the deep sleep ones, I just stop talking. You know, with these ones, I say goodbye. Usually, sometimes I can't remember. Uh, I like to think that no one's listening anymore by the time I get to the the end. But and so I got this new podcast, and I've had no listens on it yet. <laughs> but I did upload it onto my relaxation hypnosis podcast, so I've had a few listens. It, it's a bit not disappointing but I'm used to getting at the moment it's getting on to 2000 listens a day now if I it's between 1000 and 200 1200 if I don't upload anything new but if I upload new a new session every day then it's I'm starting to get like 2000 downloads a day which is cool so it's just about producing new material because I think people like to listen to something new so those days I spoil you really don't I you think me and my big black squeaky chair no one else really well there's a few people but you know commercially you wouldn't like someone like Paul McKenna he's one of the most famous hypnotists in the world and he's one of the I think the best selling hypnotist in history as far as books and you know stuff like that self help DVDs CDs hypnosis CDs things like that I think he's He's the number one, I think, in the world. But I might be wrong. I'm sure there's some big American ones, maybe bigger Canadian ones, Australian ones. But Paul McKenna, he's not just big in England. He's he's known the world out. So he's... I did train him with Paul McKenna, by the way. Just thought I'd let you know that. See, I didn't just make all this stuff up. All these hypnosis things. I actually did... I did learn, I did study, I did uh, I did actually do some hypnosis training, believe it or not. The boring part, I was just, you know, this is terrible. Okay, I won't tell you who it was. But I was having lunch with somebody, or two people, and somebody who... Um, I gotta just be careful, just in case um, anyone <laughs> that I know is listening to this, which is unlikely, but it could happen. But it's not difficult to find me on the internet, so I just kind of. Anyway, I was in this cafe, like restaurant thing, place, and this adult who's about twenty five years older than me, it was sitting opposite me. And he was saying, um, he was given directions and he said, well, listen, son, the directions from there to here. And you go down, you turn left. And he was doing the salt and the pepper and pots and the vinegar. And he got a menu out and he was like, that's the bridge. And he was, and this went on for about, five or six minutes and I thought I've inherited this <laughs> I've inherited this boredom it's this it's not that that person's boring all the time because they're not it's just the, the ability to get so caught up in a, a story that's of no this, and to drag it out and to be so specific you know I, I, I probably 
technically I could have been a really, really good accountant if I had any kind of uh, affinity with numbers. But I've got a, I've got self-diagnosed dyspraxia. I just, you know, my my brain just doesn't it freezes up when it comes to sort of anything numerical. Not all numerical things. Um, but apart from that, I'm quite good with detail. And I used to, I had this job in an insurance company. And it's probably the, my best, my most favourite job that I've ever had. And what I did all day, and it was, I liked it because I took a big pay cut to do it. So I was in sales, I was earning about 25000 a year with with the bonus. So I was doubling my money with the bonus. But I didn't like doing that anymore. You know, it was, it was causing me stress and, you know, I, I just needed a way out. And I, I managed to, I'd already applied for two other jobs internally and got turned down. I had interviews and they didn't, for some reason, didn't want me. They wanted to keep me in sales, basically, I think. Then I applied for this other job, and because, and it was in, um, what do you call it? I can't remember the name of it now. Basically, making sure everybody did their job properly on the phones. So I was actually getting a hundred pound, sometimes more actually, a month extra on top of my wages and bonus for having the best uh, score. When you know th the calls would be listening to, and they'd have a tick sheet, and you tick: Do I answer the call properly? Uh, do I ask each question? correctly in full do I, did I lead the people into answering the way I wanted them to which is a good way to get a sale but I didn't do that in that company and I used, I used to get like 100% so every 100% score I'd get paid £25 and there would be four I think there was four a month so if I got all four, it'd be a hundred pound. Yeah, so whoever got the most amount of hundred percents would get an extra hundred pound bonus on top of that. So it's between me and a lady that was there and she, I probably, I'd say 60-40 in my favour on that one I was getting the extra £100 sometimes she'd get four uh, she'd get 400% and I'd get 300% and a 98% or something like that but it used to be a competition just between me and her the only two that could do it uh, like regularly and it's, and it's really handy to have that little bit of extra money but because of that, when I applied for the job, I had the skills because I said, look, I'm the best in the whole company at getting 100%. No one else does it as much as me. So they couldn't argue with that. Compliance, that's what it's called, yeah. I, was, I became a compliance officer. Well, not really an officer, but I, I became a part of the compliance department and I started that in December 2005 and it was weird because I just started dating somebody in 2005 and I remember my sales manager laughing at me said you got a girlfriend now now you're going to need the money and you won't have any. Huh? And he, he found it funny. And because I took a, a pay cut, 
So I was earning 25,000 a year in the last year with the bonus and I went down to 13, 13,000 I think. And they had a, like a, a yearly bonus which took me up to about 17, 16 or 17,000. So it's quite a big drop. But it's the first time that I actually felt, for a long time, that I felt quite happy in my job because it was during the day. It was a long day, but it was nine to six. I had my weekends off every weekend, which meant I could do things. I wasn't doing shift work like I was before. And... I was really good at the job. And all, the whole reason really is because I suppose I'm pedantic. I can be very pedantic, very like factual, and it's not always good for friendships or for life, but it's really good for that job. So yeah, but in the end, I got a bit ill, and in September 2006, and uh, went part time. They allowed me to go part time, and then in was it June 2017? No, 2007. They gave me an ultimatum either I go full time or I leave so I left because I didn't want to go back full time again because I enjoyed the part time because I was doing more charity work I was doing the relaxation groups at the alcohol and drug rehab places Uh, I was growing the free hypnosis service online and I had the free pain relief service I was providing locally as well. So, you know, things were going really well. And then, kind of had to pack the job in. Didn't know what I was going to do. And then, I decided to apply to do a degree in counselling. And I didn't expect to be accepted on the course. But then I was. I didn't expect to be able to get funding. You know, to get the loan, to get all the grants and stuff. And I was. I got it all. I was like, wow. So yeah, so it's, it's interesting I find how some things in life that don't seem so great at the time lead on to really great things so yeah so that was a nice little boring start to this let me bore you to sleep and just let you know there's still no websites I've, I kind of missed them but I get too attached to them when I've got websites running I'm just constantly on them and working on them and I don't want to spend my time doing that anymore I prefer to spend my time doing this making recordings new material not just this but also more pain relief stuff and uh, even there's been some requests made so I'm going to look into that as well but I've not really been uh, up to doing that much the last week or so and also to let you know there's a Facebook page specifically for these let me bore you to sleep sessions so you just go to Facebook and put in let me bore you to sleep 
and this page should come up it's the big yellow it's a picture it's yellow background and it's got a picture of Andre in the middle of it he's uh, in his hammock looking cute as cute as a little ferret just have a drink I just put him to bed because he's got a habit of being fast asleep and as soon as I start recording I think it disturbs him I think he wakes him up and he thinks he's missing something I think he might wake up thinking oh there's someone in here daddy's talking to someone like a new bag that he can like climb into or another person he can rub himself over their f shoes and stuff but uh no, it's just me. Can you imagine if I had all the people in this in this room that listen to this? There'd be like fifteen people. That's a lot, isn't it? So this is the Easter weekend now over officially. It's now Tuesday. So the first bank holiday of the year is officially done I think it's the first is it the first but yeah yeah it is yeah so the first bank holiday the next bank holiday will be May Day so I don't know if that's I don't know what date that is then the second bank holiday no the first bank holiday is New Year's Day a bank holiday or is it just classed as a New Year's Day I don't know anyway so you've got May Day that's a bank holiday Monday then June is there another bank holiday at the end of May as well why would there be but I think there is pretty sure there's two bank holiday Mondays in May and then there's one at the end of August because that's quite often falls on my birthday or the birthday weekend because my birthday is at the end of the of the month and the bank holiday Monday is always at the end of the month so quite often my bank my birthday is during that weekend probably I don't know what the statistics are of that but I know my brain just froze statistics oh. and then the next bank holiday would be Boxing Day I think yeah I think so I wonder if New Year's Day is a, it's not a bank holiday is it because New Year's is because Christmas isn't a bank holiday it's a holiday but bank holiday is usually on a Monday although Fr Friday was is it Friday this Friday just gone it was Good Friday the Friday before Easter Sunday with obviously Saturday in between but that doesn't have a title unless of course you call it Easter Saturday and then Monday is a bank holiday I wonder if that's called Easter Monday I'm not sure but Friday is a bank holiday I think I wonder why it's a I suppose banks would be like a, a financial institution. Maybe there was a time when that's when the banks closed. The only times they closed was 
on those days. So people that worked in banks didn't get holidays, like proper three weeks off a year or however many, three weeks, three years, three, yeah. It's been so long, I can't remember. It has been a while. And just to let you know that there are adverts at the beginning of my recordings. And I know it's sometimes a, diff a different energy level, but... You know... It's okay, it's only the beginning, they're not in the middle, they're not in the end. You know, if you watch anything on YouTube, there's going to be an advert at the beginning. If it's a relaxation session, a hypnosis session, you know, it's always going to be. So it's just a, it's just a thing. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. do think about what kind of job would I like to do if I was able to spring back into life and be I don't know if I'd, would I want to go back into sales I don't think I don't know if I've really got it in me anymore to do that kind of stuff I think if I did do sales I'd quite like to sell something big so instead you know instead of selling a, an insurance policy for I don't know 700 pound or you know I'd like to sell a yacht for maybe 10 million and come out of it with you know few hundred thousand pounds for the sale because I think the sales percentage if you're selling for something is usually like about 10% so that could be like a million pound to sell a 10 million pound yacht but that does sound like quite a lot of money but I think some salespeople get about 20% commission. So, yeah, who knows? It, you literally would only have to sell like 10% of the yacht and you'd be made, wouldn't you? Walk away with 100 grand. It's like, there you go. Go I want my 100 grand, please? But you haven't solved the yacht. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Do you see that bit there? Yeah, you know, which bit? The, the bit right at the front. Yeah. Well, about three foot of that. Or six foot, actually. No, three or... Yeah, six foot. That would have been good with measurements. Six foot of that. I sold that. Can I have a hundred grand, please? No. I can imagine that would... We might just say, oh, there you go then. Thanks. Probably not. It could be in my resume, couldn't it, for my next job. After I was sacked from that one. I sold a six-foot yacht. I like change the words a bit a six foot yacht and he said that's not a very big yacht is it I said no but the people that bought it weren't very big and I say how much but I say how, you think, how much commission did you make ah oh, hundred grand hundred grand for a six foot yacht commission I wouldn't have thought it would cost that much to buy 
Ah, oh, but this is a made up story, isn't it? Didn't really happen. Ah, I suppose in that way you could just say anything, couldn't you? Yes, you get any idea now. Should we fly to Portsmouth? I've got some new wings. We'll have a look. They're lovely. We we'll use my wings. And uh, you can just hold on to me legs. And I'll fly you there to Portsmouth Docks. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. Isn't it weird? What's that? Well, isn't it weird that we both sound the same? Yeah, I know, isn't it? Well, how are people supposed to know which one's who? It doesn't matter, really. Why is that? Well, they're probably driving anyway, so they're probably asleep. Pretty crashed by now. Oh, that's 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 nice. Not really, is it? Well, if people listen to you. They're not that stupid, are they? No, I don't. No, I don't think so. People that listen to me are clever, they're bright, and uh, very intelligent. Very generous. Very very generous. Just all they want to do is send me money all the time. That's not true, is it? No. <laughs> it's not. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. Would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm not saying they might be generous, but just not towards me. <laughs> oh, that's a bit. Is that why it's a bit of a. Uh, what do they call that thing when you're hostile but not really being hostile? What do you mean? Oh, when you're being a bit rude towards someone, but you're kind of doing it in humour but actually you're kind of having a dig at them or passive aggressive yeah that's what you're being like, like I'm not being passive aggressive here you are you're going on about how no one uh, is generous towards you and you know that people are listening yeah well it's passive aggression isn't it well not really yeah, but you know people listen. You know thousands of people listen to you. So why why would you say that when you know that people are listening? But I didn't mean it in that way. Who doesn't? I don't. Yeah, but we sound the same. I don't know who's talking now. Well, I'm talking. Exactly. What do you mean exactly? Well, that's the excuse you can make, isn't it? You can say it was the other person that was going on about people not being, you know, your listeners not being generous and that. But it's not something that you would ever say, is it? Ah, that's clever. See, we may, that's a good thing about us both sounding the same. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I think you should go then because I think you've been very rude about my listeners because I have the best listeners in the world they're the brightest cleverest and they've got impeccable taste so I think you should shoosh you along and uh, I'll see you at the end when I'm finished we'll go out for a go out for a curry should we go out for curry a curry and a kebab a curry and a kebab yeah what? A curry and a kebab. If you not, do you not understand the words that I am saying? Yeah, I understand the words that you're saying. But what you're saying sounds a bit ridiculous. Well, why? Well, you're not going to eat. What, why? You're not going to buy a curry and a kebab. First of all, you can't go anywhere where they sell curries and kebabs at the same place. Yes, you can. Where? The curry kebab shop? <sighs> Doesn't exist. It might exist. Where? Where then? Where? Somewhere. Name one place. Somewhere that's not here. It's a whole world out there. There could be a place that sells curries and kebabs. I mean, I, I used to live locally to a, 
I said locally, not just locally, yeah, I used to be able to cross the road because I used to be his pizza place. So I'd come out of my room, walk through, the, the bathroom would be on the left, I'd walk through a front door, turn right, go up the steps, then go up some more steps and turn right again walk all the way down to the road but can I, can I stop you there please what I don't want to listen to any of your boring stories what do you mean what are you going about the bathroom is on the left who cares about the bathroom you walked up to the front door and opened the front we all go for you why do you even have to mention there's a door every house has a front door not wigwams Or we, I can't say wigwam without laughing. Sorry, wig wigwam. I don't want to hear the exact specific details of every footstep that you make walking towards the pizza place that you're about to tell me about. Ah, but you don't know about the pizza place that I'm going to tell you about. Okay, I don't know about the pizza place, but does it involve... Does it need you to tell me how many cars were on the left and what colour they were as you walked down the gravel path towards the road? Ah. What do you mean, ah? Ah. Well, I'm not the one that mentioned the cars, am I? You are. Yeah, but I reckon you was going to, weren't you? Mm. What does that mean? It means whatever I wish it to mean. Come on, cryptic Sally. Get on with the story. Okay. Well, I crossed the road. Well, okay. I, there was this... Can I not talk about how I crossed the road? No. Oh, come please. That's it's important. It's kind of the whole point of this thing is to give a few details, you know, to make the story interesting and exciting. <laughs> Alright then, how do you cross the road? Ah, well there's a few different ways. Sometimes I'll cross straight over to the right hand side where the supermarket is. But for me to do that would depend upon the traffic. And the traffic was only going one way because there was traffic lights. But there's also traffic moving down another road which was near the supermarket. So I, you know, I had to kind of uh, gauge it time wise other times I just cross over to part of the road and then cross the other side or walk down that side of the road because that's the side of the road where the pizza place was which was opposite the supermarket and I'd walk past the laundrette which was on the left then there was this it's kind of this place, it's still there, and they sell all kinds of weird stuff. Not weird stuff, but just stuff that, like expensive honey and teapots and cushions and things that I'd just never been in there. Just, just, yeah. And then, what else is there past that one? I think there's a. I can't remember. I'm trying to visualise it in my head. To so what was there? Oh no! That's the reason for this. Is because there wasn't much there. Because quite a lot of the shops, I think, were closed. But it was definitely a laundrette. And I think there was an estate agent. 
there was you walk up a bit and there was a pub on the left then there was an underpass which goes underneath the road why did you pause I was just waiting for you to just point out that that's what an underpass is something that goes underneath the road I thought you might correct me no 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 carry on I was half asleep that's a bit rude I'm telling you very interesting facts here so you can go under the underpass or you can cross the road which has traffic lights so whichever way you go you end up in the same place now my decision upon going under the underpass or going across the road would depend upon whether there was a busker in the underpass if there was a busker playing a guitar and singing there was a particular one that would be there regularly and I would I'd go down the road I'd cross the road and then as you cross the road there's a computer shop then you keep going down I think there's some kind of sun salon place there's a place where a bank used to be there's a place where a butcher's used to be there's a strip club um, that doesn't say the word strip club but it is apparently apparently and what else is there I think there's another news agent not news agents there's a another letting agent my state agent or whatever then there's that's where the pub is no I've already crossed the pub no that's earlier on and a bit further down is, there's like a coffee shop maybe two coffee shops and then there's the pizza place and they used to sell kebabs in there and pizza but they didn't sell curry are you telling me that you told me all that just to point out that that pizza place didn't sell curry yeah what is wrong with you what, what do you mean a bit rude I mean what what <laughs> Why couldn't you just said that you used to go to a pizza place that sold kebabs and pizza but not curry and you've never known a place that sold curry and kebabs which was kind of the the gist of what we were it was the jizz of what we were talking about isn't it yeah wouldn't that have been easier just to have said that rather than going through all of that I mean the busker I mean I'm just glad that you didn't go into great detail about him or her well the reason I didn't really go into great detail partly because I was if I could avoided him uh, and I the sound because it's an underpass the acoustics are quite good on the underpass and you need to really sound bad in order for yourself to sound bad 
in such a, a acoustically welcoming environment. Yeah. He, I don't know, I think he had like two strings on his guitar. And... It just... It didn't work for me. I can honestly admit, at no point in the... I don't know, six years that I would do that journey... Did I ever once think to myself, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk up to him and talk to him and say, hello mate, how you doing? Just got one question for you. I've been listening to you for six years. Six very, very, very long years. Just proves that time distortion is actually a reality. And your time can be stretched. And I was wondering if you have a CD of yourself that I could buy. An album I can purchase. Maybe a, a single I can download from Amazon or iTunes. No, nope, that never happened. Never once thought about doing that. In fact, I remember the underpass was clear one day and I thought, oh good, I can walk under here. Because I prefer just crossing that road was just, it wasn't always that much fun. Not that crossing roads are supposed to be fun, but they're not supposed to not be fun either. I don't know what the rules are, but I saw the underpass was clear and I thought, there's no one there and I'll walk under the underpass I'll give myself a big treat so I walked under the underpass and I thought you know what I'm so excited I'm going to have myself a nice egg sandwich or egg roll I think it was so I went into this cafe which was a few doors up further sort of going back from where I'd gone from so I got that nice egg, egg roll had a cup of coffee and, oh it was just it tasted so much better without that sound in the background it's like oh my taste buds are no longer hiding from me because they, they used to hide and with earplugs in their ears like, and I'll be calling taste buds come I'm about to eat now they couldn't hear me they weren't ignoring me because they like me, but we get on really well. Um, but they just, I feed them a lot of chocolate, that's why. But they just, you know, it's like, oh, that egg sandwich. And that yolk, it was nice and runny. And it's, it went all over my beard. It's just always oh, lovely, it was. And I, I didn't drink all of the coffee. You know, I really drink the whole coffee when I'm in a in a public place. I don't drink coffee that often. But when I'm on my own, I might have a cup of coffee and I might just drink some of it. Maybe half, maybe a third. Of course, it's hard. You can't it's hard to know if it's a half or a third or a quarter you, you can't sort of go to the counter and say please can I have four cups the same size please because I'd like to measure them measure how much I've actually consumed 
you know, not everybody would be um, accommodating to such a request. And I had this egg roll and the coffee. Let's just say a, a quarter of it I drank, maybe half. It was nice. The thing is, coffee is quite bitter, isn't it? Even if you have sugar in it, it's, it's a little bit bitter. And eggs are quite... I find eggs to be quite sweet, especially the yolk. Or as I used to call them when I was a kid, the joke. And my dad would say, no, it's the yolk. Don't ever say that again. It's like, oh, that's a bit harsh. I was only having a yolk with you. Uh, and he didn't find that funny either. So I decided never to do another pun in my life. Or attempt. Not attempt, attempt. And so I finished off. It took a little while to wipe the yolk off my beard. And I thought, you know what? I don't trust my wiping. There's been times in the past that I've wiped myself and there's still been a little bit left. And yeah, it's especially with my beard. So I just kind of I thought I'll go to the toilet. There's a mirror in there. And if there's no mirror, I'll just have to look into the toilet and use the toilet water as a reflection and wait for the toilet water just to calm itself. So, but that I didn't have to do that because there was a mirror, and it looked all right. You know, it's it looked okay. I did a quick wee and waited for the rest of it to come out. It does not come out all at one go now. It's there's a. Uh, there's a bit of a delay. You know when you're on a radio, you phone a radio station up and you listen on the radio whilst you're on the phone talking to the radio host and there's a delay and you can hear them but they're like, I don't know, 10 second delay or 6 second delay or something like that. And it gets really a bit weird that's what it's like with my bladder and my willy there's a real kind of little bit of a delay system there between um, my willy saying come on then and my bladder is like busy doing something else but eventually the job gets done and uh, of course before I leave I flush the toilet before I leave I turn the I turn the heater, like the hand, hand dryer on for about 20 seconds so the people outside will think that I've washed my hands. And then I went out, just trying to fit in with society, you know. So I went out, I said thank, well I probably didn't say thanks, I might put my hand up and waved like a little salute a little scribble salute imagine a, a scribble saluting that's probably kind of what I looked like and I waddled off out of the door, out of the door uh, turned left and it's literally just a few a few shops and then I'm back at the underpass and um, looking down and I kind of knew that the the bloke that's the, the busker that plays the two string guitar uh, in fact I think he had less teeth than he did have strings on his guitar but you know I could hear he still wasn't there and uh, so I'm just really looking forward to it and I even stopped a couple of people um couple of friends or people that I knew they were like outside the cafe chatting and they were just I said what were they chatting about 
What are you chatting about? And they said, that's a bit of a weird way to to get into a conversation. It's, it's a bit blunt, isn't it, really? Not what are you chatting about? I said, well, no, I'm just interested. Well, why are you interested? I said, I don't know. Come on, just for the sake of the story. Just someone play along, please. And then one of them, one of them said, oh, come on, just give him a bit of a break. He's trying to tell a story here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard enough you're making stuff up. Uh, but to have the fictional characters that you've made up in a story being annoying and being rude, it's, it's, it makes it just much harder. And he said, all right then, Ted. He said, well, I told you before, you call me Edward or Eddie. They never call me Ted. Oh, okay, okay. And I said, anyway, what are you talking about? And I said, well, we were just talking about the busker. One tooth Tony. He's not He's not there. Not there today. I said, I know. That's why I went into the, the cafe to celebrate. So I had an egg sandwich. Well, it's an egg roll. I keep calling it egg sandwich, but it's an, actually it was in a roll. Um, and a cup of coffee to celebrate. I said, what are you you went and celebrated the busker not being there by having a, an egg roll and a cup of coffee yeah yeah I did well that's a bit weird isn't it don't know really just seemed like something to do seemed like a good idea really at the time well, I suppose each to their own. There's no, um, no. I'm not going to judge you for it. I'm just, just, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm off anyway. Yeah. See you later. Bye. So uh, I walk down, start my little journey towards the little tunnel, the underpass, and it basically goes down. You walk flat for about, I don't know. 30 seconds 20 seconds and you walk up again so I get down to the bottom the bit which is flat there's absolutely nobody in there at all and then suddenly I let off the massive fart it's the biggest stinkiest egg roll fart that you've ever ever heard or smelled it was absolutely ridiculous it it made me jump because it came out of nowhere I thought it was I knew I was going to fart but I thought it was just a little you know just a little bit a little bit of uh, release and a little bit of air out of the tyre you know that kind of a little plump of a, you know I don't know what the right word is for it a little puff a little pff, 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 like that however it wasn't it was a full full on it was loud it was really loud and it echoed 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 properly really and the loudest fart I've ever done turned into even a, an even louder fart because of the echo of the underpass and I heard in the distance the people that I was talking to a few no, 30 seconds earlier I heard one of them shout out oh my god and the other one said what they said the busker's back he started singing again they thought my fart was the busker singing they thought my, the sound coming out of my anus was one tooth Tony. And it wasn't. And then something really weird happened. I thought, I've got to get some air out of this. And I, I, there's no one around. I pulled my trousers down. 
and I thought I need to check to make sure it's, it's okay and I looked I can't believe what I saw it was only Tony the busker he was hiding inside my pants it wasn't a fire at all it was him he was singing he'd hidden in my pants and he'd started singing thinking he was back where he fought because he fought in my pants was the underpass because in his words it smells the same urine feces it's like oh it's a bit grim I don't think that's a good thing to be saying at the end of a deeply relaxing sleep session he said well you're the one saying the words I didn't make you say the words he was hiding in my pants I said get out of my pants he said you don't need to tell me twice Never wanted to be there in the first place. I'm not going to tell you what happened next, but that'll have to be another episode of the story. So all I can say is this is going to be the the story of one two <laughs> one tooth Tony the busker hiding in my underpants that could be the title but then it could spoil the uh... <laughs> I don't think anything could, sp- anything could spoil this I think it's uh, it was it's beyond perfect So hopefully you've fallen asleep and if you haven't fallen asleep it's been mildly distracting from your everyday stuff and I wish you well and send my love and I will speak to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.